Good morning. All right, why don't we begin with a word of prayer together. Lord, we're grateful to you for many things. And uh, right now we're just grateful that we get to be here, that we get to be together, and that we have the freedom to meet together, um, to hear your word without filter, to sing without restraint, and to pray without fear. Just help us to honor you in everything we do and say and think here today, God. Help us to give ourselves wholly to you because you are good and you're trustworthy. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand up together, guys. Thanksgiving hymns in a little bit, but um, some of us already had a uh, Thanksgiving dinner last night. That was, that was great. Thank you to the, the fellowship committee for putting that on. And then they said we're going to sing some songs. And I was like, oh no, there's only five Thanksgiving songs, and I picked out two of them for tomorrow, but somehow Lydia picked out the other two, so it, it was great. But um, I didn't want to I didn't want to pass on this this holiday that gets overrun sometimes. Um, I, I wanted to look up the, one of the original Thanksgiving proclamations. Of course, when I Google Thanksgiving proclamation, something comes up from the CDC. But that's not the one I'm going to read today. So this one is, um, this is just a message from George Washington in 1789. And it's, it's a little lengthy, but it's just, it's so great. Um, 
by the President of the United States of America a proclamation. Whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey his will, to be grateful for his benefits, and humbly to implore his protection and favor. Now therefore, I do recommend and assign Thursday the 26th of November next to be devoted by the people of these states to the service of that great and glorious being who is the beneficent author of all the good that was, that is, or that will be. That we may then all unite in rendering unto him our sincere and humble thanks for his kind care and protection of the people of this country previous to their becoming a nation, for the signal and manifold mercies and the favorable interpositions of his providence, which we experienced in the course and conclusion of the late war. For the de great de 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 degree of tranquility, union, and plenty, which we have since enjoyed, for the peaceable and rational manner in which we have been enabled to establish constitutions of government for our safety and happiness, and particularly the national one now lately instituted for the civil and religious liberty with which we are blessed and the means we have of acquiring and diffusing useful knowledge, and in general, for all the great and various favors which he has been pleased to confer upon us. And then the response to that gratitude. And also that we may unite in most humbly offering our prayers and supplications to the great Lord and ruler of nas nations, and beseech him to pardon our national and other transgressions, to enable us all, whether in public or private stations, to perform our several and relative duties properly and punctually, to render our national government a blessing to all the people by constantly being a government of wise, just, and constitutional laws, discreetly and faithfully executed and obeyed, to protect and guide all sovereigns and nations, and to bless them with good government, peace, and concord, to promote the knowledge and practice of true religion and virtue, and the increase of science among them and us, and generally to grant all mankind such a degree of temporal prosperity as God alone knows to be best. I found it pretty neat that this, this baby country that had just found its independence was already looking out to, let's pray for forgiveness for our transgressions. Let's pray that other nations will prosper. Let's pray that we will be able to be a beacon and that we will um, be able to grant prosperity to, to people as God knows to be best. So... Let's um, stand together and turn to 790. Gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. He chastens and hastens his will to make known the wicked oppressing. Now cease from distressing. Sing praises to his name. He forgets not his own. Beside us to guide us, our God with us joining, ordaining, maintaining his kingdom divine. So from the beginning, the fight we were winning, the Lord was at our side, all glory. Our leader triumphant And pray that thou still Our defender will be Let thy congregation Escape tribulation Sing name be 
ever praise, O Lord, make us free. Thy name be ever praised, O Lord, make us free. A couple pages over to 794. Let all things now living. You may be seated. Let's take a little bit of time here to uh, highlight a couple announcements. The announcer is in the back on the table as well as the uh, calendar for October, November, whatever month, November? November. Uh, on the calendar, be sure and note that today is Miss Bethany King's birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Bethany. Um, also, there is the meeting after church today, immediately after, and that will be to vote on a couple things. So if you're a member, be sure and stick around for just a little bit for that. And then, later on today, there's a party, because I see a couple kings out there. There they are. Mr. and Mrs. King, do you want to stand up so we can see you? Mr. and Mrs. Matthew and Sarah King, here for, uh, here for a little trip up from California, so they'll be having a reception later today at 2 o'clock. Thank you, guys. Um, so, of course, you're all invited to come and celebrate their new marriage and life together. All righty. Um, also, there's a lot of prayer requests in here. Um, and uh, I'd like to take a little time right now to, to pray through those together. Just if we could... You can follow along, and the announcer has some names here, so let's pray. Father, we thank you that you know what's best for us, that you have ordained our lives and, and written for us everything that, that will come to pass for your, for your honor. And we want to pray today for the people, especially that are sick, that, that are friends and family. Um, we pray for Tim Ingstrom. He's still struggling and, um, and fighting. Um, that you would continue to give him strength, to give the doctors wisdom, to give his family strength as they, they wait um, beside him and they, they pray diligently for him and with him. Just p please bring healing to his body, God. Please be with um, David, Dan, and Neela, friends of the Metzlers. 
please keep them safe and, and bring their health back to them if that would be your will. Thank you for helping them to heal up a little bit. Please be with Mr. Capone, um, Kelly's dad, and uh, thank you that you have, have restored him um, from COVID, from where he was, and uh, please continue to heal him and with the cancer struggle that he has now, um, just give him strength and, and courage and um, keep fear from his heart as he uh, looks ahead to um, what, what needs to be done about that and um, just help him to trust you with his whole heart. Please be with uh, Shane that has COVID that um, is sick as well and please uh, bring him close to you. Help him to trust in you if he doesn't and to trust you more if he does. Please heal his body, God, if that be your will. And we pray for Mary Hake's brother, Paul. Thank you that he's home now and, and doing better. And uh, please be with Mary and the family and encourage them, help them to know how they can best serve him as he heals. So God, we thank you that um, though our time here in these bodies is temporary, you care about it and you, you will glorify yourself through our sickness and through our health. And so uh, be with these, these family members, these friends of ours, and um, keep them close to you, God, and, and bring glory to your name through everything that happens in their life. In Jesus' name. All righty. Why don't we stand, and, oh, uh, stand for the scripture reading. So it'll be 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. If you're using a pew Bible, it is page 1016, 1 Peter 4, starting at verse 7. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God. Whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Let no one caught in sin remain inside the lie of inward shame, but fix our eyes upon the cross and run to him who showed great love and bled for us. Freely you bled for is risen from the dead, trampling over death by death. Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave. Christ is risen from the dead, we are one with him again. Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave. Beneath the weight all our sin you bow to none but heaven's will no scheme of hell no scoffer's crown no burden great can hold you down in strength you From the dead, trampling over death by death. Come awake, come awake. 
Come and rise up from the grave Christ is risen from the dead We are one with Him again Come awake, come awake Come and rise up from the grave Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, hell, where is your victory? is risen from the dead trampling over death by death come awake come awake come and rise up from the grave christ is risen from the dead we are one with him again come awake come awake come and rise up from the grave christ is risen from the dead trampling over death by death come awake Come awake, come and rise up from the grave. Christ is risen from the dead. We are one with Him again. Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave. I thank you, Lord. For saving my soul Thank you, Lord For making me whole Thank you, Lord For giving to me Thy great salvation So rich and free Thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. And thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation. So Thy great salvation so rich and free. Here's my heart. Pure. 
are sure you are life you endure you are good always true you are light breaking through and you are more than enough you are here you are love you are hope you are grace you're all i have you're everything here's my heart lord here's my heart lord here's my heart lord speak what is true here's my life here's my God, we are, in, we are in gratitude to you. We're not in debt. There is no debt. Christ took the debt in his body on himself on the tree when he suffered and died for our sins that we should have suffered and died for. We have no, no weight from that. We only have thanks to you for the salvation that you bring through faith alone in Christ alone. We offer you our hearts and our lives, God. That's a moment-by-moment -moment thing. Help it to continue to be true for us, not just once, but day by day as we live through your spirit. Thank you for Mr. Dixon as he comes to share and um, for all the, the vote afterwards and um, just that you would be glorified in our hearts and in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Um, if you're a note taker, I did bring a note sheet, and uh, a couple of guys are handing it out, so um, if you like that sort of thing, helps keep me on track a little bit. You know, that, that last song takes on a whole other meaning when you know when it's over, you're the one that gets to speak. <laughs> speak what is true. And so... I know God is here, and he's going to help me, because even in that passage we read, it talks about, let him who speaks, speak as if he's speaking the very words of God. So I don't take that lightly today, but before I start, thank you, my brother. I would like to have Guy and Angela come up here for just a moment, if I could. Where, where are you guys hiding at? Guy, Angela? Wait a minute. There they are. There they are. Okay. I, I know you're kind of buried in kids there. You know, the month of October is Pastor Appreciation Month. And usually something's done for... Well, we did do something for Pastor Ron to express our appreciation to him as he retired... And usually something was done for Guy, and Guy kind of got, uh, well, not forgotten, but um, just in the midst, we, we really wanted to celebrate with Ron and Mary Jo, so we kind of kept it separate this year. But why not give thanks for someone this month, Thanksgiving month, okay? So we have a little gift we want to give Guy and Angela, but... I'm going to try and do this the best I can, but the, 
these two people are very special to me. Um, you know, when I was the youth pastor here, well, when we started, Guy was too young for the youth group. <laughs> but then he came up through the youth group, and I think it was, I don't, it doesn't matter what day of the week it was, it seems like it was Tuesday mornings. It's been a lot of Tuesday mornings at Guy's house early before school. Investing in Guy and some of the others that were in the youth group, and Guy, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for now turning around, investing in my children, now my grandchildren. I don't know if you get to the great grandchildren, but we'll see. <laughs> um, but anyway, thank you for your faithful service. And we have a little certificate here to help the two of you get away for a little break when you can schedule it. And we just want to help you have a time of refreshment and renewal. So we just want to give this to you. And when you uh, pick out the, the date and the place, we'll work out the other little details with you. So anyway, I just want to pray for these guys if I could. Thank you, Father, for Guy and Angela. Thank you, God, for their faithfulness to you, first of all, and then to serving the youth in this fellowship. Lord, I pray you just continue to give them joy in what they're doing. God, I pray you'd give them strength for the journey. And Lord, I pray that their ministry would continue to bear fruit, fruit that lasts forever. So I just ask your richest blessing on this family. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless you guys. Okay. You know, I started thinking about an interesting thing as I was preparing this message, and you may wonder why I have a suitcase. Well, I, I took this little bag with me when I went to Arizona last week to see my dad, and and I was, start, was working on this message, and God gave me a little thought that I hope will help you grab on to what I want to share today. And it's the thought of handles. Lots of things have handles, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I started thinking about it. I mean, there's everywhere you look. I mean, whether it's a drawer or a door or a tool, uh, you know, a hammer, a rake, a shovel, um, a suitcase, a coffee cup, a mop, a broom. Uh, it, it, the list could go on and on and on. But handles, it's interesting, I looked up the definition of a handle, and it's on your notes there. This isn't the most significant thing for you to get filled in this morning, but a handle is a part that is designed to be grasped by the hand. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. And it's the part by which a thing is held, carried, or controlled. So it's something we can grab our hand onto, and it gives us control over that object. Handles are everywhere. I'm, I'm thankful for them. But more important than physical handles, I want to ask you to really try and find a handle to grab onto this morning from this sermon. You know, I've listened to a lot of sermons in my life, and some of them I walk away with something that I just had to grab a hold of, take it with me. And I wanna, I'm, I've been praying a lot that you will find a handle today on this message, but I want you to really be on guard today between the last amen of this service and by the time you get in your car and leave the parking lot. We lose something a lot of times between that little period of time. And today it's probably extra easy because we have a vote, we have a, a wedding reception, we have all kinds of things going on to distract us. and to, We could lose what God wants us to hear this morning. So I, I just want to encourage you, and I'm even going to pray for all of us right now before I start this message. Father God, God, you so desire for us to not only be hearers of your word, 
but to be doers of it. Lord, we know we have an enemy, and he wants to distract us and deceive us. Help us to think that just by being here this morning and listening, that's good enough. But God, that's, that's a lie. So Father, show us a handle. that We can grab on to your word today as we hear it and determine not to let go of it, Father, until we put it into practice. That's my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. Oh, wait. I'll open this up here. Just a sec. Okay. Place to put my papers when I'm finished with them. Let's see. That one I'm done with. Okay, if you want to open your Bibles to 1 Peter 4, Andrew read it for us already. 1 Peter chapter 4. Verse 7, well, just a second, let me get there. Verse 7 starts off, the end of all things is near. Now, my purpose this morning is not to talk about the last days, which I know there's a lot of conversation around today, and there's a lot of things that seem to be more and more coming into focus and in line with God's word that we are getting close. But So, all I know, because God has told us we don't know the day or the time of our Lord's return, But if Peter wrote this almost 2,000 years ago, that the end of all things is near, all I know today is that it's nearer, okay? And I'm looking forward to it, and I want to encourage you in that. And are we in the last days? Yes, we are. We're in the last days, and we're nearer than we've ever been. I want you... To not so much focus on the fact that we are in the last days, other than what comes after the therefore in the next verse. It says, therefore, be clear-minded and self-controlled so that you can pray. Um, You know, I probably should have had one of those note sheets up here. Okay. Um, We need to be, we need to pray. I'm not going to lay a lot of guilt on you this morning about how's your prayer life? Is it what it should be? I just want to exhort you to continue to pray. If you know when I say that, oh God, maybe I should step it up a little bit. Well, that's up to God to work in your heart, what he wants from you. But I I just want to exhort you to pray. You know, we're to take prayer seriously. Paul says to pray without ceasing. We ought to have a continual conversation and communion with God every day of our lives. It should just be normal. God, you're here. I need help right now. I need wisdom. It should just um, be a normal part of our day. Pray continually. It says we're to be self-controlled. That's also translated sometimes be watchful or alert. Paul undoubtedly remembered the night in the Garden of Gethsemane with Jesus when he fell asleep. Peter Peter was there. And the Lord spoke to him, Could you not watch with me one hour? I don't know when your hour of prayer is, so to speak. When is the time you've dedicated to God to pray? Not only should it be continual and constant and just a part of our daily life. But there's also a very significant time to have a place, a time to meet with God. Alone? Yeah, he says to go in your room, close the door and pray to your father is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done. Oh man, I can't even quote it now. Anyway, he will reward you. I'm, I really messed that up. But God wants us to come aside and be with him privately. Close the door. One of my favorite places is right down by the river. Away from us, there's a rock to go sit on down there by the river and pray. God likes us to come together and pray. I just exhort you to pray. That's so important. As the end of all things is near, is to pray. So on your notes, handle number one, 
I just put the question there, when will I pray? Maybe you need to set aside a time. Maybe you want to come join us at 8 o'clock over in the RTC building on Sunday mornings. I, I don't know when other times are... I know there's different groups, small groups that meet and pray. But do I have a time when I meet and pray with other people? I encourage you, think about that. When will the time be for me? Secondly, it says, Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Well, there's a little extra punch on that one. Above all, above all, love one another deeply. That's the sign of authentic Christianity, is love, agape love. Not because you deserve it or anybody else deserves it. I just choose to love. God chose to love. So loved the world that he gave his son. He didn't want anyone to perish, but everyone to have eternal life. You know, in the New English Bible, I like the little translation I came across. It says, keep your love for one another at full strength. Love each other deeply, fervently. As you look around the room this morning, you don't have the view I have. I like the view I have right now. Do you look out there and just go, I love those people. I love those people sitting here around me. So love one another deeply. Okay. Let me see what I skipped on the note sheet. Oh, yes. Love covers a multitude of sins. This teaching doesn't suggest that love tries to ignore sin or justify sin or condone sin. But love covers a multitude of sins. You know, I, I just want to encourage you to make your default setting, as I put in the note sheet there. I will forgive. I will forgive. Love keeps no record of wrongs. If I hang on to it, I lose. I become angry, bitter, resentful. I will forgive. I will seek to be reconciled with my brothers and sisters. So handle number two just says, who will I forgive so I can be set free from anger, resentment, or bitterness? I hope the slate's clean. You know, I, think of, I was thinking of this and I was thinking of a new pastor starting here at our church. Wouldn't it be awesome to come into a clean slate? so to speak. No one's holding grudges. No one's bitter. No one's angry. We just say, I, I will forgive. You have to answer that question for you. I have to answer for me. But I want to have a clean slate. I will forgive. Number three, it says... That's on the back side of your notes there. Offer hospitality to one another. That's verse 9. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Wow. I didn't realize that was so important. Of the key things we can do in these days we live in. Pray, love one another deeply, and then out of that flows Offer hospitality to one another. As I looked at that more and more, I just realized that that was, that was more than I thought it was. It's not just inviting someone over for dinner after church or any other time. It can include that. Yes, it can include that. But it goes way beyond that. It's sharing everything that God has given me. It's sharing my home, my food, my resources. Our very lives, our time, 
our talents. Acts 2.46 in the early church, it says, They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Yes, that's part of it. But then Acts 4.32 says, All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they shared everything they had. You know, I made a comment about a week ago that I wanted to spread some gravel in front of my barn. It was a bit muddy, needed some gravel. Well, one brother used a truck to haul the gravel there and dumped it, and I came home, there was a load of gravel. Another brother brought his tractor over and spread it the next day, and I, it was all done when I came home the next day. Awesome. I don't have a tractor. I don't have a dump truck. That was awesome. But it's, it's sharing. It's doing life together. If I hear of a need, I want to help my brother. I want to help my sister. But notice the last couple words in that statement. Without grumbling. Well, I guess I, guess I could take time to do that. No. That... That love at full strength, that deep love, sincere love for each other. She said, man, I, I, I got to find a time this, this week to help my brother. Because that would be such a joy. And I know guys done an awesome job training the youth in our church to serve. And they were out doing something yesterday. I don't know where they're at. You may have had them at your house. The youth group may have showed up at your house for something at some point in time. I know they've been at my house more than once. And I, we should just have that heart. I want to help you. You're my family. True hospitality flows out of that love. Oh, let's see. I think I'm done with that one. Let me, let me see what I missed. Without grumbling. Handle number three. Who needs my help? You know, just in Sunday school class this morning, we were talking about, you know, people that are, that are shut in or, you know, people that are sick. And, man, just, the, just those few minutes to maybe make a call, write a note, those little things go a long ways. Who might I have in my home to get to know better? You know, I started to write down, maybe we've had some new families in our church recently, and it says, maybe you should have a new family over for, for dinner. But I decided, you know, I, it, it's... It's up to all of us. Maybe you're new and you want to say, I want to get to know people. I'm going to invite somebody over to my house. Sometimes we like to wait for someone else to take the first step. And I, I just say, you know, let's, let's all take the first step. Let's all take the first step. To love, to show hospitality, to help, to encourage, to build up the people around us. Share everything I have. If you need a place to stay overnight, I'll try to accommodate you, but my house is pretty full right now. Uh, some of you know what I'm talking about. No. <laughs> um, number four. Number four. Verses 10 and 11. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. So number four is just serve one another. Serve one another. Each one of us. Notice it says, each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others. It doesn't mean every other person. It means each one. Every one of us. Well, I'm not quite old enough, or maybe I'm a little too old. No, it means all of us. You know, I, I sat by a very young person at the Thanksgiving dinner last night in our fellowship. 
I was encouraged by that little guy last night. We didn't have any long, in-depth conversations, but I was encouraged by one of the kids in our fellowship last night that I had dinner with. And so I don't care if you're little, if you're old, anywhere in between. Each one of us has a gift, some way to serve and encourage and build each other up. Um, it says to use that gift. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. Use it. Use it. So if you're trying to fill in the notes, it's each one has received a special gift. Use it to serve others. Use it. You know, sometimes when we talk about spiritual gifts, and I have nothing against this, I've, I've done some of these little surveys and tests to help you kind of identify who you are and understand how God has gifted you and how he's made you and even some personality tests. Some of those things are good to understand what kind of, who, I, who am I? What, is, what gifts has God given me? How can I use them? But don't get stuck there. I've seen some people that I think get kind of stuck there. Well, like, i got to find my gift so I know how to serve. But you know one of the best ways to find your gift is to serve. You will find things that, that fit you, that, that don't fit you. And, but start serving. Start serving. You know, if you need a place to start serving, I've got a real simple idea. I think, I could be wrong, Steve Roby might correct me, but I have got the church, and there was even somebody frustrated um, last, well I wasn't here last week, but two weeks ago when I was here, because the pencils in the pews weren't sharp in our little area. I don't know who's in charge of sharpening the pencils. So if you need a simple place to start, there's one. I think we could all do that. So, um, I also found out that when we do communion, those little trays don't just appear up here when we did that a few weeks ago. And, and whoa, someone's got to do that. And I think I was told the Pastor Ron usually did that. So, I did it. I figured it out. But if somebody wants a nice, simple job that would be very helpful, there's lots of places that people can help and serve. So I'm not going to go on and on about, but um, if you're just looking for a little place, there's a couple ideas, but let's see. So here's, here's, here's the point. God real clearly in this passage gives us some priorities for the fact that the end of all things is near. And if you really think about it, when Peter said it 2,000 years ago, when the church was just getting started, these were the priorities. They're still the priorities. I mean, to pray, to love one another deeply, to be in right relationship, to forgive, to offer hospitality, to be a, a people that truly care for each other, willing to share, give of my time and my talents and my goods, whatever it is, to serve one another. And then just to find my place to serve. God's gifted me. I, I cringe when I hear somebody say, oh, 20% of the people do 80% of the work. That's just not right, God. You've got a place for each of us. We could do so much more. If 20% can do 80% of the work, what, what could 100% of us do? We could do 800% of the work. I don't know. <laughs> so find your place. I exhort you to clear the slate. 
If there's anything you need to just get right with somebody else, be willing to take the first step. Forgive. Be diligent in prayer. Pretty simple. You knew you weren't going to get some real fancy, fandangled message from me, but it's pretty simple. Now, I reminded you, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray in a minute, and then there's going to kind of be the last amen of the service, and I warned you about that. I want you right now to be thinking, maybe you've written something down on paper already. How do I need to respond to God's word today? How do I need to respond? Last little statement on this here. What is the spiritual handle, God, that you want me to grab onto as I hear your word today and not let go of until I've put it into practice? Don't let go of it. Well, it's time to zip up the message. That pun was intended. When I leave here, I'm going to take my suitcase with me. I'm going to grab a handle. And I pray that when you leave here today, you have a handle that you will grab onto and say, God, I'm going to do this one thing. I'm going to do this one thing that you've been talking to me about through your word today. So let's pray. God, my heart is excited as I look out across this group of people that there's a lot of things that are going to happen because each one of us said, I'm going to do one thing. I'm not going to let go of it, God. I'm going to do it for your glory to encourage the body of Christ around me to build up my brothers and sisters in Christ. God, I want to be a part of what you're doing in the world. Even if it starts as simple as sharpening pencils. I want to be a part, God. So bless your word, Father. I know um, you could have said it a lot better than I could. So just let your word stand for what it says. And help us to respond to it. To your glory, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.